that's after the second programme in the series in which an atheist philosopher and a bishop spend a day in each other's company to examine some of life's big questions. Tonight, they look at the role of education and ask, where do we get our values from? Jane Little presents The Atheist and the Bishop. Most people would argue that we can be good without God. But in an increasingly pluralistic and secular society, can we assume that most of us know what is right and what is wrong? Where do we get our values from? That's what we're taking on in this programme, and I have the titular atheist and bishop beside me. Professor A.C. Grayling needs little introduction as one of this country's most prominent philosophers and outspoken atheists. Bishop Richard Harris joins me again from last week. As a member of the House of Lords and as former Bishop of Oxford, he's tackled some of the thorniest ethical issues in public life. Now for a completely different learning environment. In 1996 in Kentucky, Camp Quest was born. It emerged as an alternative to the Boy Scouts movement, which required a declaration of belief. Here the children of atheists can learn about life and a reason-based, God-free approach to decision-making. Camp Quest has just arrived in the UK, just outside of Bath. I'm Edwin Kagan, founder of Camp Quest. It is a camp that provides, as it were, a night light in a dark and scary room for children who have been raised in a religious atmosphere in a milieu of supernaturalism and superstition. I'm here with my sister and uh, we're both from Dublin. Well, we were brought up atheists, but we're here more for the critical thinking side of it. Well, I was mainly brought up a Christian in my grandparents' side of the family. And my dad is quite a strong atheist, I would say, so he wanted me to have the other side of the opinion. I'm more drawn to the atheism because it has more proof. What's the black hole? What's the black hole? The dead star. It, that's a really good question. A black hole, this is, this is a really interesting thing to talk about. My name's Diana Moylan. I'm a retired teacher. Camp Quest has a scientific base rather than a, you can't see it, you can't know it, but believe it anyway. Yep, so what, what we're doing with the origami is a Darwin-themed exercise. We're going to be making some quite general animals and some of the animals which, thanks to Darwin, we have uh, kind of good explanations for we, we, we know about. Pick up your frogs and keep them in the same, same place. I believe that moral values are something different. They're internal. We know. We know internally what's right and wrong. If we are able to think about our actions, the effects of our actions on others and others' actions on us, then we're able, I believe, to develop a moral code which is no better, no worse, but equal to any other God-inspired moral code. Well, most values are learned from our parents and stuff, and here we just be nice to each other. We don't need a Bible or anything like that to tell us not thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal. We already know that for a fact. Well, you use your common sense, basically. I mean, it's obviously not right to kill somebody, so that, that's one of the easy ones, nor is it right to steal. But it's actually quite easy to think for yourself what's right and what's wrong. I get values from my parents and from instinct as well. I suppose we get a bit more leeway than other religious people because we don't have a book that we have to follow of atheism. And so I suppose it's a little more up to ourselves to interpret how we think. I don't believe in God myself, but I don't you know, mind if other people do. Camp Quest is not a form of indoctrination of any sort. It's quite the contrary. We do not teach the children there is no God. We, as one little girl put it, we teach that it is okay not to believe in God. Well, that was the first ever Camp Quest UK, and appropriately enough, having heard there about the importance of science and reason, we're now sitting in the Aristotle Science Laboratory at Bacon College. Conical flasks and test tubes at the ready. Uh, I'm still with our atheist, A.C. Grayling, and our bishop, Richard Harris, and we're joined by Samantha Stein, who is the director of Camp Quest UK. Um, Samantha, what's the purpose of Camp Quest? 
Well, the purpose is really to provide a secular alternative for parents who are raising their children in a non-religious household and to send them to camp. This is just particularly to address philosophy, science, critical thinking um, in a friendly and fun atmosphere and also to do some fun outdoor activities. Now you talked about critical thinking, placed mm. a premium on helping to develop that. Sure. Tell us a little bit about this unicorn challenge exercise. Well, at the beginning of the week, uh, the kids are given this challenge and they're told that there are two invisible unicorns which inhabit the grounds at Camp Quest, but you can't see them, you can't hear them or touch them, and they don't leave a trace. Uh, and all the counsellors, we have faith that they exist. So the kids are invited to submit their proof that these unicorns don't exist. Yeah, and obviously, you can imagine that the kids are trying to disprove the existence of God, but really what we're getting them to do is work out whether it's possible to prove things like this and where the burden of proof lies. So it's not just a sort of clever camp game, it's an exercise in theological and philosophical discussion. And if a child goes away believing in unicorns, what happens to them? Um, I haven't heard from anyone yet, but I hope that we wouldn't necessarily encourage the children to believe in unicorns. Richard. Samantha. The poet Stevie Smith was a devout Anglican for most of her life, but came towards the end to turn against it very uh, strongly. And towards the end of her life, she also wrote a despairing poem which ends up, unless we teach children to be good without enchantment, we shall kill one another, we shall kill one another. I think you probably agree that religion gives morality kind of enchantment, it gives it a, a sort of lure there's a radiance about it because it's irradiated with the kind of beauty and goodness of God and that can inspire and motivate people. I don't think that an atheistic morality has that kind of radiance, if you like. There's a danger of it just being a kind of bare-bones morality. And isn't that a great uh, loss and diminishment? Well, I don't think that getting your morality from the natural world is bare bones at all. I think actually it is very enriching to a child's life. A way of looking at the world through science is definitely a very exciting exploration. It's not something that's been told to you by a book or by a priest. I can see it's enormously exhilarating to be with other people and pursue issues of, of truth in this critical kind of way. But is there that in a kind of atheistic humanism which can hold together and inspire and motivate whole communities? I don't think that there is yet. But I think that's part of what Camp Quest is trying to achieve. It's trying to let people know that you're not the single atheist in the class or even 15 single atheists in a class. It's a community and it's not really a common belief system. We have one thing in common and that we don't believe in God. But there is some kind of common morality that is with all of us. And regardless of whether it's religion or otherwise, that common morality can bind us together. Anthony. Samantha, um, whenever people talk about ethics, of course, they quite rightly mean uh, how we think about one another, how we treat one another. But um, sometimes people forget that there are also ethical aspects of inquiry, too, about honesty and truth and about not carrying to your inquiries presuppositions and, and prejudices. Yeah. Uh, is this something that you're keen to encourage the children to understand? Well, a lot of what we wanted to do with Camp Quest was to introduce the idea of logical fallacies to the children, um, most of whom probably wouldn't have even heard the term before. So, for example, a, a straw man argument, which I think is very common with prominent atheists in the media, particularly Dawkins. Samantha, that's, um, I'm very glad to hear you talking about uh, not simply arguing with, with straw men. And it's also very good to hear that people are brought up to uh, expose myth as myth and errors as error. But morality also involves an attempt to understand the other person's argument, the other person's point of view, and therefore arguing with the, the other person's strongest argument rather than, as you rightly implied, you know, simply the straw men. So how would you in the future put forward the strongest argument and strongest reasons in favour of God? I would like to see some kind of discussion about religions in future years, but at the end of the day, it's not a religious studies lesson. Anthony. How will you encourage children to have a clear idea of what they think and a clear idea of what viewpoints don't deserve respect if they don't? Well, I think that the best way of doing that is um, to 
invoke Carl Sagan when he said extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And I think